Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so thrilled to have um, our participants online with us and um, Dr. Gormley and Julia Gutierrez Albright with us today for um, our uh, program, Healthy Living um, Read to Me. And um, just a couple of points I'd like to make is uh, participants, your audio is muted. Uh, we have a question and answer at the bottom of our um, of your screen. Please use that um, to ask a question. And both of our presenters, Dr. Gormley and Julia Gutierrez Albright, welcome your questions. And we'll also have this program recorded. So uh, you may refer to it again in the future and we'll send it to you um, in an email. Uh, telling our story today is uh, Dr. Matthew Gormley, and he's our pediatrician and internal medicine physician with his office in Croswell. Hi, Dr. Gormley. And then um, teaching us about the importance of breeding is um, Julia Gutierrez Albright with her master's degree in early childhood education and a member of the Great Start Collaborative for Sanilac County. And Dr. Gormley, now I would just love to uh, have you begin. Uh, right now you're muted, Dr. Gormley. I will um, Is that better? Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> perfect. Okay. So I think today's uh, presentation is really important because again, we wanna make sure that we're increasing literacy across the board, not only in our area, but in the state and in the country. Um, and Julia is gonna talk about that a little bit more um, in a little bit here. So I get to do the fun part. Uh, if there's any children who are listening into this and are gonna be participating, I have a little activity that you get to join me with in regards to the story. So today we're gonna to be reading Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, okay? And every time that you hear the word twinkle or star, I'm gonna have you guys go ahead and do some hand motions with me. So when you hear twinkle or star, we're gonna do those hand movements so that we can be participating in the story as well. Because I know Zoom is an interesting thing to work with these days, okay? And if I had you all sitting in front of me, then I'd probably be do doing the same thing. So hopefully this will work out okay. And adults, you're always welcome to do it also. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Twinkle, twinkle, star so bright, winking at me in the night. How I wish that I could fly and visit you up in the sky. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. Can you guys all see the star up here on the page? Little child, your wish came true. Here I am right next to you. I'll take you on a magic ride. So come with me, I'll be your guide. <clears throat> There's so much that you'll see and do on this adventure made for you. Out your window through the sky, up above the world will fly, higher than a bird would go, <clears throat> to places only rockets know. Beyond the plains that soar up high is where we'll travel, you and I. Look around you, little one. There's the moon and there's the sun. See the planets, count them all. Some are big and some are small. 
Can you name them one by one as they orbit around the sun? You guys see all the planets? Look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and maybe nine, depending on who you talk to now, Dan. Your planet Earth is such a sight. I look at her with great delight. When half the Earth is in the sun, the other half I glow upon. For it's my job to twinkle bright on everyone who needs my light. I shine on ships lost out at sea. They know that they can depend on me. For even on the darkest nights, I guide them to their harbor lights. And lonely travelers wandering free will find their way back home with me. Everywhere I look below, I shed my light and cast a glow over cities, over farms, on babies held in loving arms. How I love to watch them grow as I shine on earth below. Little child, look down with me and tell me, tell me what you see. I see puppies in their bed, a pony resting in his shed, little birds high in a tree, and sleepy children just like me. You guys see the puppies? One, two, three of them. And look at all those sleepy kids. That's what us parents like to see. Yes, it's late. We can't pretend our magic journey has to end. I'll take you home, back to your bed. You'll see me twinkling overhead. But don't be sad. I do intend to shine on you each night, my friend. Twinkle bright, my little star. Watch me safely from afar. Thank you for this magic night and the comfort of your light. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. What a special star you are. And each one of our kids are a special star, hopefully to multiple people out there. Um, again, it's important that we work with these guys starting at a really young age. Um, and that's why uh, most of the medical providers in our county also participate with the Reach Out and Read program, which is a national program that kind of helps increase literacy. Um, by doing, or in doing so, we pass out free books to all of the kids when they come in for well visit exams from six months to age five. And, you know, based off of that, you can see why it's so important to start at an early age. Um, we want to get books in the hands of everybody. So hopefully we can continue to work on this and improve literacy in San Lan County. Thank you, Dr. Gormley. And participants, please remember to use the question and answer function um, if you have a question for us. And I'll ask one right now, Dr. Gormley. Should a nighttime bed story be part of a, of a routine that is usually done to help uh, quiet minds at bedtime? Yeah, that's a great routine to get into. Number one, kids really thrive off of routine and schedule, um, no matter what the age. Um, and two, again, it's able to give us an opportunity to bring reading into the home. Um, and, you know, for most of us, reading is a really relaxing pastime. So even at bedtime, it may help not only calm things, but set up some structure. It's a good thing to add into the routine in regards to getting PJs on and brushing teeth and then having a story. Plus, it's a really good way to bond with your kids at the end of the day. Thank you. Uh, Julia, would you like to um, lead us in a presentation now? Yes. Let me grab my PowerPoint here. Share my screen. Can you guys see my screen okay? Doc and Louise? Yep. I can. Awesome. Sanilac Great Start Collaborative. I'm going to pull out my chat. Okay, so uh, thank you, Louise, for the gracious introduction, and thank you, Dr. Gormley, for that wonderful segue into what we're going to be talking about today. 
I wanted to quickly thank Mackenzie for hosting this very important topic and quickly just talk about the functionality of the training before we get started. So I'm going to use the chat function in the Zoom. So feel free to um, answer questions there, although you can use do the Q&A as well. But um, so if you're not familiar with Zoom, if you hover over the bottom, you can pull up the chat box and it should pop right up on your screen. I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer as well that the content and views of this presentation are those of the individual, myself, and should not be attributed to HDC or any community action. All right, let's get started. So I wanted to give a little quick background on myself. I'm gonna put this in present mode really quick. Let me see. There we go. Okay, just because of it being virtual, I think we need some kind of like human piece going on on our Zoom. So um, like I said, or like Louise said, my name is Julia Albright. I, um, I re recently received my master's in early childhood education from the University of Michigan, although at our house we say go green. If my kids were here, they would say go white. We're very big Michigan State fans. Um, I was born in uh, St. Alec County. I moved away for college, but then I came back here to raise my family. Um, this is our, my cute little family here in this picture on the day of my graduation. And I did put my email on here so that if anybody wanted to outreach to me or connect or had questions, to feel free to do so. Um, so for today's presentation, uh, we are collaborating the Great Start Collaborative and Talking is Teaching Initiative. We're going to talk a lot about that today. So I'm representing one of the Great Start Collaborative Workgroup Initiatives, and that's a part of our strategic plan here in Santa Lac County. Um, my hope is today that you'll walk away with learning a little bit more about how beautiful an early childhood brain is, and also just to spark your interest in the Great Start Collaborative and the Talking is Teaching material. So for those of you who aren't familiar with our Great Start initiative in our county, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on our mission and our core beliefs. So our mission at Great Start is that every child in Santa Ana County, birth to five, has a safe and healthy start in life. And we do that, um, you can see here with our core beliefs, things that we kind of try to provide access to is early childhood care and education, physical health care, social emotional support, and family support. All right, uh, so to align with our mission at Great Start, we wanted to, uh, we started to adopt an initiative called Talking is Teaching. And Talking is Teaching is a national program that highlights the importance of everyday living and how to incorporate learning um, in everyday living with families. So uh, the program material um, provides material that helps incorporate language with young children. And what I really love about this program and this initiative is that it gives a community response. And so really what I wanna talk about, and I love that we are able to give this platform for our initiative, is just really informing our community on how important early literacy is. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit, you can see here, this is part of the Talking is Teaching uh, material. So you can kind of see what we're gonna kind of go with. It's just like curriculum that we're putting up in our community. So we'll talk more about that as we go forward. All right, so for me, I am a huge data person and I, for me, need to know what the, you know, why is this initiative important? What is the research to kind of support that? So I wanted to go over a couple of things here. This is the um, research from Hart and Risley. And basically what they did was evaluate how many words were spoken in um, a child's environment. And they compared it to how many words later that the child could verbally say. So if you look here on this graph, uh, the red line is representing how many words a child heard in their environment, and it correlates very highly to how many words a, ver a child could verbally say. So this could really be happening at the daycare center, how many words they're hearing there, um, at their preschool program, how many words they're hearing there. So not just on the caregiver, you know, especially just out in the community, how many, um, how much language is a child exposed to? 
So I want to talk a little bit too more about um, some more data here. And this is just talking about neuroplasticity, which is a fun word. Um, but basically what happens, we had one time at our work group, had a pediatrician come in and talk to us about the neurotransmitters that are happening in an infant's brain. And neurotransmitters is just really like the communication. It's a part of your nervous system, but it's like the communication that goes on in your brain. And so if you see on this picture here on the left, you can see at birth, um, their neural development is not, it's, it's lower. And then as a child kind of grows and develops, so that has here in the middle at six years old, the neural development has extremely, um, is, has extreme growth. If you really think about it, a child's brain from birth to five, like the matter of the brain grows so much in that very early years. This graph also shows, I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, as a child moves into adolescence, there's this thing called neural pruning. And really what's happening um, is that the neural system is just kind of redefining, um, you know, it's kind of focusing and being more articulate. Um, so you can kind of see here at the 14 year old level, neural development kind of just, it's not diminishing, but just kind of like, um, solidifying what they've learned so far. So I really think, you know, it's important to talk about how, um, you know, any chance I get to talk about early childhood, I talk about how it really is a cultural misconception that we think that learning starts at kindergarten. That's when the average, um, you know, the public school system starts, but really it starts at birth. You know, learning starts at birth. It even starts in utero. Um, so it's very important to talk about with community. Okay. So now that we know a little bit about the research, I wanted us to um, put it into practice. So what I'm going to have us do here first is just watch this short three minute video. And I want you to see or kind of notice what you can pick up as far as how the, the caregiver is implementing language development or eliciting language development in everyday activities. So I hope that you can hear this. Let me turn this on. Can you hear it, please? Okay. Look closely. What do you see? Believe it or not, this baby is doing math. During the first year, as babies explore and play with groups of objects, they begin to build an early understanding of numbers and math concepts, like adding and subtracting. How many pieces do we have? One, two, three, four pieces of mail. Here, Emma is helping her mom clean the table. In this everyday activity, she is learning about one-to-one -one correspondence or the idea that each squirt of the cleaner has a number value, one, two, three. Activities like these build a child's growing understanding of quantity. One, two, one more, three, all right. By age two, children also understand the idea of one more, they learn these early addition and subtraction ideas through play and everyday routines, like snack time. Toddlers also learn about addition and subtraction through songs and stories. Talking and singing together doesn't just build language skills, it can build math skills too. Between three and five, preschoolers apply their new knowledge of adding and subtracting to their daily lives. One, two, three. I know we're missing two. I know we're missing one and two. As preschoolers, children may tell you what number comes after three. And by five, if you say two numbers, like two and nine, they may tell you which one is larger. You can help your child master these skills by pointing out differences in quantity as you play and talk together. Using math words like putting together, plus, adding, taking away, and subtracting 
also helps children learn these concepts through everyday moments. So how many do you have now? Five. Five. So then what if we wanted to keep going down? How many would be in the next one? Four. Okay. When it comes to adding and subtracting skills, they may start small, but they add up to a lifetime of success. And so to kind of tie that to the video, this is where the Talking is Teaching curriculum comes, kind of correlates with what we're talking about. So you see here on the right, there's this infograph that Talking is Teaching, it's like their material curriculum that you might see posted anywhere in your community. And so some of the ideas and really what it, what it um, elicits is what kind of conversations can you have with infants and toddlers and preschoolers? And this really can go on for any age. Um, so this one is talking about specifically math. So here are some of the ideas how you can incorporate these math concepts into your everyday living with children. And so it talks about how many cookies are left if I take one, that's a math problem. Simon says jump four times. Um, how many halves make a whole apple? And so that's what I really like about this curriculum. It just gives you ideas for extension of conversation with kids. And again, this doesn't just fall on the caregiver or the parent. It can be really anybody in the community. It could be your pediatrician talking to you about, um, you know, having this infograph ready in an office visit and um, them having those conversations with the infants and toddlers. So I want to try um a small activity it's not something huge but what i'm going to do is replay the same video but a very short clip it's like 10 seconds and i want you to think about and if you feel confident or you know feel willing to uh share in the chat what you think you could possibly add as far as language extension with the child so i'm gonna it's gonna give you just a short little clip and think about what you can um, kind of extend on as far as language development. Oh, what I do? <laughs> Let me go back. Okay. I hope that I'm going to turn the sound off too, so that's not super distracting. Let me see if it'll load for me now that I skip the head. Okay. Here we go. So thinking of that interaction between the caregiver and the child, how do you think that you could add language into that interaction? Um, even if you don't share in the chat, uh, just think about that. You know, I think about, um, you know, they could compare the sizes of the apples and the oranges. They could compare the numbers. You know, there's three apples compared to four oranges. Colors and shapes, yep, talking about the colors, different colors, that's a part of math. Um, what else could we, oh, we could talk about weights. You know, you could have the child hold each of the fruits and um, which one weighs more. Uh, that's a part of math. Great examples. Name the apples and oranges, kind of fruit, how many apples do we have? Yes, these are all great. Thank you for sharing in the chat. Um, these are all great ideas that you can implement in early, early literacy, early language. Okay. Um, one last activity. Um, for me, I have to very much like do what is being taught to me <laughs> for it to stick. And so I wanna just do a really simple activity. I love sharing this activity because um, it's perspective taking from a child's point of view. And I think that's so important as we adults have our own agendas and trying to educate our children. We sometimes forget what the child's perspective is. So for this activity, you just have to grab any object that's in your vicinity. Um, it could be a water bottle, have some paper clips, anything that you can like tangibly touch. Um, so go ahead and grab something. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be anything like super specific. And so what I want us to think about is 
first I want us to kind of think about, um, you know, think of like a child at, at the age of birth to five, or even think of your own children. If you don't have children, think about a niece or a nephew, or if you can think of like an early thought of when you were a child, um, put that thinking cap on as we explore this object. And so what I want you to do, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. And what I want you to do is just mentally know, or you can take notes on a piece of paper if you want. But what I want you to do is to pretend that you're the child that you thought of and explore the object. So for me, just for an example, if I were an infant or a toddler, let's say infants, uh, if I had a water bottle, I'd probably try to squeeze it. Um, so you're really just trying to explore the object as the the, the child would. Um, I know a lot of infants will put things in their mouth, so they might try to chew on the water bottle. They might shake it or tap it on their, their um, high chair or something like that. So go ahead and explore your object. Okay, I'll bring us back here. So finish up your last thoughts as you're exploring your object. And if you wouldn't mind sharing that in the chat, I think that's cool to kind of see how other people explore things and just kind of, I think we all learn from one another too. Um, so if you wouldn't mind putting like the object and maybe like one or two thoughts that you had while, while exploring that object. And so again, just to tie this to the talking is teaching material, um, you see this infograph here in the middle of our screen, and it says, let's talk about shapes. So what are some things that we can incorporate? If you think about that child's perspective, how could you incorporate shapes into that learning? And so, for example, um, you know, one of the questions is, what, uh, what else is a circle? So you can maybe identify at the bottom of the water bottle that this is a circle, and you could say, what else in the room do you see that's a circle? So a lot of you are probably already doing these types of language, which is awesome. Um, so I'm just really kind of like making that connection that you're really fostering great learning for our young kiddos in our community. Okay. So let's move on. I have just two more slides here. So I want to talk about what community collaboration looks like with Great Start Collaborative and the Talking is Teaching curriculum. So this is kind of an initiative that our work groups have taken on, I said, you know, previously a part of our strategic plan. And so just here you can see how the Talking is Teaching material is present in this community. So this is a nationwide community. It's new to our county, this initiative, but um, so you can kind of see the examples here. There's some messaging or curriculum at the park. There's even messaging at the hospital. And there's a ton of different infographs. They have a ton of material. And so for the picture there at the bottom, you can see it says, let's talk about what happens at the hospital. And so they give you different ideas on things that you can extend conversation on with the kiddo. So yeah, just going back to, again, if you are the grocery store clerk, or you are um, a youth minister, this material is very important and vital to you as well, because how can you talk to those littles that you may have contact with? Um, you know, I really think about, for me, I always think about, you know, how can we foster, um, you know, math skills, you know, how do we create math uh, success in all students in Santa Lac County. You know, I really like to think about that idea. Um, I think about to, you know, having that community response is really a great opportunity for, you know, parents like myself feeling confident in raising kids in my community. Um, oh goodness, I lost my train of thought here. Let me find where I was at. Um, yeah, so just a stat that I had read recently, um, you know, San Lac County is rated at uh, number 33 as best place to raise a kid. So I would love for us to be at number one. That would be like ideal and 
great. Uh, I think Lavonia County is number one, according to the stat I read. So I think this is really a great initiative to get us there. Okay. So just again- I do have a question in um, chat. It yeah. said, who started the initiative? How long has it been um, around? And um, uh, yeah, they want to know how it started and how long it's been around. That's a great question. This is new to our community. Um, this is a part of the Great Start Collaborative, which is um, through the ISD, but it's just a, a program here that is offered. Great Start Collaborative has been around for a very long time, but this is just something that we thought would be beneficial for our community. Um, and so that's why we've started it. They've, we've done a couple of messaging. We actually, at one of our last meetings, um, someone suggested putting messaging up at the walking trail, which I think is a great idea. I think a lot of families, that's a great benefit to our community, the walking trail here in, or there in Sandusky. Um, so we're, we're trying to get it up and functioning and running. Um, it's in its beginning stages, so. Julia, when you showed the poster about um, what happens at a hospital, I had the idea of parents who work. Wouldn't it be nice if they made a poster of what goes on at their place of work? That would be a great um, discussion to be able to have with your children. I love that idea. Let's see, we get so many great ideas. <laughs> I love it. That's why I think this opportunity to present to our community is so crucial because you guys are already doing the things in our community. We just want to partner with you on these things um, because I think everyone in our community is very invested in, you know, raising young children, early childhood. And so, yeah, that would be a great idea. I think that's a great conversation. Dr. Um, yeah, so just to kind of Go ahead. Well, I was going to ask Dr. Gormley a question, but I'll wait, Julia. Okay, this is my last slide, so <laughs> well, and then I'll be done chatting. Um, I always say anybody that will give me a microphone to talk about early childhood, I will talk for days. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, just again, kind of hitting on what community partnership looks like. So if you see over here on the right, this is some of the curriculum and messaging that's in a grocery store. So this is something that they put on to like their freezer section. Because again, these conversations are happening in the normal environment that a child is in. So what, what are those like additive um, math extensions or talking about shapes or numbers? Uh, how are we talking about that at the grocery store? So for the example here, it says, what's the smallest thing you can find? Um, so it gives you those those starters um, for to talking with kids. And then here too, they put some messaging. They, as in, I'm not sure, I got this off their website, the talking is teaching. So, oh, it says Minneapolis right there. Okay, so they put their messaging on public transit. Um, so again, just talking about when a, a baby might be traveling on public transit, what kind of conversations can you be having with them? Because they are sponges, right? We all know that. Um, and just to kind of give a plug here for the Great Start Collaborative, if you want to like us on Facebook, um, you can find out all the information about us. And Carolyn McEntee, she's the director of the Great Start program here in St. Alec County, and she would love to have conversations with you regarding this initiative. <laughs> um, and I as well, so please feel free to reach out. Julia, you had another wonderful comment here that said um, maybe a whiteboard could be added next to the poster board for um, children to uh, be able to utilize. Yeah. Yes, that's a great. We actually are working on, I was talking to Miss Carolyn, um, like the interactive pieces for the kids to do. So, you know, the messaging is really for like caregivers and parents and community members, but what are the kids doing that maybe fosters that language? So we're working on that, um, putting those up in our community. Great um, questions. 
I have a comment and a question for Dr. Gormley. I never aspired to be a math teacher. So if someone tells me to, I have to teach math, I can get anxious over that. But I noticed in Twinkle Twinkle, um, you were automatically counting the stars and the number of planets. So you incorporated math that made me feel uh, more comfortable about it. And yes, parents can teach math too. And the question um, that came up from your presentation is, are there certain types of stories that are better than others for nighttime? Good question. I think some of it depends on getting to know your kids as well. Um, most of us as parents have probably been through stages where you read the same book over and over and over. And again, it's that repetition, it's that routine that they look forward to because they're actually starting to put together what's going to come next. And it's, it's fun because you can start to have them read back some of the story to the best of, of their recollection as well. Um, I, I think you bring up a really good point in regards to the math question. Um, sometimes people don't realize how much they can be doing just by doing something. Um, you know, again, if you're thinking that you have to have a calculator out and be doing all that, that's not necessary. It can be as simple as walking down the sidewalk and, hey, how many cars do we see? You know, or what color is the stop sign? And, and it's just like Julia was talking about through her whole presentation. It's a lot of everyday items, everyday concepts that you can be using as a parent, grandparent, um, neighbor, friend, whoever, to teach kids. Um, and I think most of us don't think of it that way because either one, that's not what we're focused on or, or two, we just didn't realize that that was actually what was happening when we as that instructor type um, actually are engaging with the kids. I think that's the biggest concept there, Louise, is realizing that it's these small, simple daily practices that really become such a learning opportunity for our young children in the area. Thank you. Um, I'd like to um, let our participants know this is um, a final chance maybe to submit a question if they have a question. And then I would love to call upon our participants for um, closing remarks. Um, Julia Albright from Great Start. Yeah, just to kind of talk about what Dr. Bromley was saying, as far as the repetition, you don't even have to have a book. That's, I mean, I think a lot of misconception is you have to sit down and open the book one page at a time. You can honestly just sing nursery rhymes. That's, I think, the biggest, um, you know, I always explain it to parents. Think of you were trying to learn a different language like German or Spanish, like hearing those words over and over makes it stick. And especially if they're in rhyme form, you know, that makes it and you have like hand gestures, you know, itsy bitsy spider, something like that. Um, that really just it's it's really the difference of I, I love the repetition of nursery rhymes and that's literacy. It's considered literate, you know, anything, anything is literacy. <laughs> so. Excellent, yes. And really that incorporates so many different areas of brain and, and brain development that that's why so many of us can pull up, you know, certain songs or nursery rhymes that maybe we haven't even heard since we were a child. Um, you know, again, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, that was a good book because, it, you know, you, you think of the song, you think of that um, pattern learning that Julia was just mentioning. And those things really stick in your brain. Um, and again, depending on how you learn, if you're a visual audio learner, kinesthetic, again, with hand movements, things like this, you can incorporate a lot of these different learning aspects and learning styles into your child's you know, learning pattern. And, and that's what it takes is getting to know them and then realize how they learn best. Excellent. Um, Reading is fundamental. The research shows that children um, who, who, who read um, have um, a great advantage. 
I thank you for uh, bringing this home to us, Dr. Gormley, and um, the Reach Out to Read program that your office has. And um, the Great Start Collaborative does so much for our preschool children. Thank you, Julia, for joining us today. Thank you everyone for joining us and the email link to the recording will be sent to you. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks Louise for hosting and Julia, thanks for your presentation. That was great. You as well, doctor. Alrighty, bye y'all. Have a great day.